Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. Uh, the last time I started out with a joke, and this time I'm going to start out with a joke, Brother Marcus. Uh, there was a guy, he died and went to heaven to stand for St. Peter. St. Peter says, get a little crowded up here, so I'm going to ask you three questions. He said, you answer these three questions, he said, I'm gonna, he said I'll let you in. He said, he said, they're not too hard. He said, the first one is, he said, what's uh, two days of the week that start out with T? Uh, the second one was, how many seconds are in a year? And the third one, what's God's first name? And the boy backed up and he looked and he said, well, he said, my answer to the first one, he said, is going to be today and tomorrow. He said, well, that's not exactly the answer I'm looking for. He said, but on the technicality, he said, I'll let that ride. He said, I, what about your second one? He said, well, he said, there's 12 seconds in a year. He said, how in the world did you come up with that? He said, well, there's January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd. When he said, okay, he said, on the technicality, that'll work. He said, well, what about the fourth one? He said, what about the third one? He said, what about that? He said, well, I learned it in church. He said, and they wrote it in a song, and he said, it goes like this. His name is Andy. He said, we mean Andy. He said, Andy walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I enjoy having a good time in the Lord. Amen. Young people, you can have fun. Amen. And go to church. I, I know that's a little bit... Uh, a little bit corny joke sometimes, but hey, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we're a little bit too uptight about this thing, amen? We need to relax, calm down, step back, look, and just say, hey, you know what, God, you're in control, let's go, amen? And that works for me, because I get a little uptight when I'm up here, because just like Gillis said, he takes it home with him. I take it home with me. I'm not, uh, you know, I, 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 I worry, I, I study, I, I read, I pray, I seek God, uh, you know, to make sure that I've got uh, what God wants for His people. And, and, you know, as I begin, uh, and sometimes the information kind of compiles itself, you know what I'm saying? And, and so for the past week or so, uh, I don't know, maybe two weeks, and then Christian all of a sudden yesterday, she says, well, I want to get a new door and put it on the front of the house. And I thought, yeah, well, I don't need a new door. I've got Jesus, amen. He's the door. Amen. He's the only way in, right, Brother Marcus? He's the only way in. I praise God tonight uh, for that in my life, but... He spoke to me a word. He asked me two questions. He said, which way and by what way? Which way and by what way? I'll take my text from Matthew 7 tonight. Two verses. Gillis touched on them this morning. Uh, praise God. But Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, it reads like this. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, in 14, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The way. Amen. I preached a message one time, I want to be in the way, not in the way. Amen. I want to be in the way, not in the way. Uh, but by which way and by what way? As I begin to study on this, God give me uh, three things about a way, about the word way, W-A-Y. Amen? And if I had the liberty tonight, uh, I, I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. And, and, and if you would, uh, let's pray tonight. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to come, God, and be in your house, Father. We pray, God, tonight, Father, for your spirit, God, your, the anointing, God, that, Father, that's in this place tonight, God, that it would uh, flow, God, in here, God, that your spirit, God, would move breast to breast tonight, God, touch people's lives, uh, change their hearts, God, open their eyes to see, God, and we pray, God, that you get all the glory and honor, and, and Father, for all things, and we give you the praise and the glory, Father, and the church said, Amen. Uh, but I begin to study and, and begin to hatch this thing out uh, over the past week or so, uh, about which way and by what way. It's a couple questions. Uh, by which way? There's only one way. Amen. When I come to the conclusion, uh, I watched a movie last night called Woodlawn. Anybody seen that? And it, the symbol of Christians was this. 
And it means by one way. There's only one way that you're going to make it to heaven. Amen. I don't care what anybody else says. The Bible says, Brother Gillis, there's only one way to get to heaven. Uh, So as a church, we start greeting each other this way uh, because we know there's only one way. Amen. There is no other way. There's not a ladder. There's not a back door. There's not a window. There's only one way. And that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Son of God uh, that was sent to this earth to bleed and die for us on the cross. Amen. There's only one way. By what way? Uh, The way that God has laid out before us. Amen. There is a way that God has laid out before us, Brother Gillis, uh, that is a perfect path. Amen. That is a way that will lead to eternity. Amen. Uh, uh, That is a way uh, that that will be flawless. A way that will be, if it's carried out correctly and you're walking in the will of God, amen, that nothing uh, can, can persuade you to go any other way. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of false doctrines out there. There's a lot of false teachers out there, amen. There's a lot of uh, 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 people that teach different things about uh, there's other ways or, or you can go about it this way or if you're just a good person, if you give to this charity. Listen, unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, there is no way, amen, amen. amen to enter into the kingdom of heaven. There is no way. The first thing that he spoke to me about was wisdom. The church needs to have wisdom. We we, we need to have wisdom. Amen. In this walk with God. Not our own wisdom, which we'll get to talk about here in just a minute, because in James, he talks about two types of wisdom. Right, Brother Marcus? He talks about earthly wisdom, and he talks about heavenly wisdom. Amen. Earthly wisdom will sell you short. Amen of the kingdom of God. But heavenly wisdom, on the other hand, is not your and my wisdom. Uh, Brother Gillis, we, we, we have a hard time understanding uh, the wisdom of God sometimes. We have to pray for the wisdom of God. Amen. So we can be enlightened and that we can know What's going on? And that we can be, you know, uh, Brother Gillis talking about being able to walk by that pretty girl and, and know that he has a beautiful wife at home and not even bat an eye at her. But there's a lot of people, Brother Gillis, that don't recognize that. They don't recognize the devil. Amen, when they see him. I seen a picture the other day that had a wolf. And he was standing in the middle of a herd of sheep. Did you see that one? And he was sheared just like them sheep. He was cut just like them sheep. And they said, this is how easy that a wolf can blend in to a flock of sheep. And the only way that you could tell was by looking it dead in the face. And his face was different. I'm going to tell you that if we don't look the devil right in the face and discern, hey, this right here is the devil. Amen? Uh, There's a difference... Uh, between judgment, or passing judgment, and discernment. Amen. We need to have some discernment. We need to know uh, the difference between right and wrong. We need to know the devil when he shows up. Amen. What he is, what he looks like. Amen. Uh, A lot of times the devil don't show up with a red tail and a pitchfork. Amen. We have a misconception the devil don't have a red tail and a pitchfork and a set of horns. The Bible says that he can appear as an angel of light. And he can make it look good. And he can dress it up. And then when he jerks the rug out from underneath you. And you're left standing all by yourself. Because, hey, I tell you, there was a time in my life uh, that the devil had lied to me and, 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 and everything w- was going wrong. I, had, I, I was on drugs real bad. And, and, and I had made some mistakes uh, in my life. And I thought I was doing it all by myself. And I was way away from God, Brother Jesse. I was, I was far away from God. And, and the devil had lied to me and convinced that, yeah, I got you back, man. Men use brothers. Men use bros. But I'm going to tell you that when the rubber met the road, and I got caught because, listen, young people, older people, be sure that your sin will find you out because everything is naked and open in the eyes of God. I did things that I didn't know, that I didn't tell my mama I did or my dad I did, but somehow they knew. 
Because you know why? Because they had a relationship with God. And God was cluing them in on some things. That old Joshy boy wasn't as lily wide as he was putting on. Amen. That, that little Joshy boy wasn't as good. Amen. Uh, my dad come out one time at 4 o'clock in the morning, found me. I was 16 years old. He said, do you know what kind of people are out this time of night? And I said, yeah, me. He said, no, son. He said, things that are done in the dark, things that are done in secret, people that want, don't want to be seen in the light are out at this time of night. And I can tell you that we need to get some wisdom about us in our life and we need to know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the devil. The voice of God and the voice of the devil. Of the devil. Hey, the devil, he'll show up and whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Your wife's down there. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. It'll be all right. Nobody will know but you. Hello. That's the devil. Yep. <laughs> That's the devil. He don't come in banging cymbals and drums and throwing parties and all this stuff. And Woo, yeah, come on, man. It's wild and crazy. No, he comes in just subtle. And he can whisper... He can get loud. But I'm going to tell you that I was this morning, uh, whenever I listened to that guy and he told that about the Wizard of Oz, when, when Jesus pulls the curtain back on the devil, and we really see him for who he really is, Brother Darrell, it'll be just, we'll go, <laughs> him, he was my problem. He, he was my deal. Because he's, not, he's just, he's puffed up. He's not, he, he, everybody's got the devil out to be this big. But they, listen, he, uh, he's nothing. He has no power. If you've given your life, to, if you give him power, yeah, he's got power. He's got all the power that you let him have. Over your mind, over your emotions, over your body. Yeah, he, you, you can give him power. But you've got the God-given right to tell the devil no. Yes. And to say absolutely not. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We've got to have some wisdom about us. Amen. The difference between the two wisdoms, earthly and heavenly. James says it like this in the 13th chapter. He says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation. Huh. What's our conversation? What's our conversation? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? I, I can tell you that I, I, I'm guilty as the next person. Hey Amen. My conversation's not always about God. It should be. It should be something that's constantly on my lips. A, a, a godly conversation coming out of my mouth. Uh, just the other day, uh, I seen a, a picture of a boy with a, a girl with another boy, and I thought, well, what in the world is she doing with him? He must have lots of money. That was my. That was me. Not a very good conversation. Not a very good conversation. What is our conversation? Well, what does she have on? Who does she think she is? What is our conversation? We need to have a good conversation. We need to be talking about good things. We need to talk about the blessings of God and what He's done for our lives and, and what, he, what He means to us. Amen. Where He's brought us from. We need to tell people about uh, the deliverance that's in our life. Amen. I've been delivered. I've been set free. Not just in here, amen, but out there. Amen. Just like Gillis spoke this morning. Whom the Son is set free is... Free indeed, amen. So we are free. We're no longer bound in bondage, amen. We've been loosed. We've been out of the cage. We need to be one of them talking birds, amen, uh, that's loose. And we want to talk about God and about the things that He's done in our life. Wisdom. He says, let, me, let, let him show out of, the, of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. 15 says, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. Amen? Church people acting devilish? Oh, yeah. In our conversations. What are our conversations tonight? 